Hello again everyone, I'm the Almighty Bob, and today you're watching Let's Play Alf in the Color Caves. Alf's a little blob-like creature who likes to dance and spin, and he needs your help to guide him through the color caves. I think of Alf as less of a game and more of a lesson in life. I think there's a lot that you can take away from this game to apply to your everyday activities. Life's going to be full of a lot of different oddly shaped twists and turns, and you got to learn to adapt yourself to all the new situations. If you just stay the way you are and try to be stubborn, you're not going to get anywhere. And if things start to look really bad, sometimes all you need to do is whistle a happy tune and do a little jig and everything will get better. And you can't let those waffle gums get to you. You know, if the bad things in life start to crop up, sometimes you're better off just letting them pass you by and moving beyond them. You know, I really admire the effort that Spinnaker Software put into making Alpha in the Color Caves. Anyone can go out and create a game, but it takes someone really special to create something that's going to teach your kids an important lesson. Whoa, hey, hold on a minute, Alf. What do you mean they're not buying it? This is something that just can't be ignored. It's got to be pointed out to the whole world. Yeah, so? But this stuff's more important than some god-awful game. Well, I guess I could show them Rocky Horror, but... Well, alright, if you say so. Alright, well then I'll see you next time, Alf. So once again, welcome to Let's Play the Rocky Horror Show. I'm the Almighty Bob, and believe me, you're in for a treat tonight. Here we get introduced to our two main characters, Brad and Janet. It's not going to matter which one you pick to play as, the game's going to play exactly the same no matter what. Now if I didn't risk entering this castle, this would be an awfully short video, so let's get started. The Rocky Horror Show game is very loosely based off of the Rocky Horror Picture Show movie. In fact, it's not as loosely based off the movie as the Starship Troopers movie is based off of the Starship Troopers book. Anyone who's read the Starship Troopers book and seen the movie knows that the movie could be just renamed Lots of Evisceration Part 23 and it will make a difference. The premise behind the game is really simple. The play is either Brad or Janet. The character you don't pick has been turned to stone. And the 15 pieces of the Demodusa machine have been randomly scattered about the house. You gotta find them all and reassemble them before the timer runs out. Along the way you're going to run into all the major characters from the movie. And their job is simply to annoy the hell out of you and make this game as difficult as possible. The job of Magenta, Columbia, and Frankenfurter is to steal your clothes and drive you completely insane. When your clothes are stolen, you can't do anything got to wander around until you find them again and pick them up. While the clothes are always going to be left in a place that's accessible to you, you can waste a lot of time searching around for them, because this castle is very big and the timer runs pretty quickly. Riffraff's job is just to chase you around and shoot you with the antimatter gun. Good rule of thumb is if he's facing you and he's on the same vertical plane as you, his gun is going to fire. It's got a pretty good reach. Now the Rocky Horror Show is a very tough game, because you're actually fighting two timers throughout the whole way. The countdown timer at the bottom of the screen is the game time. Once it hits zero, it's game over. The other timer is the thermometer at the right hand side of the screen. Once that goes above zero, then Eddie gets out of the freezer and he starts riding around the castle. Eddie's a colossal pain in the ass because he'll appear completely at random and he speeds across the screen at a high rate of speed. If he touches you once, you're dead. You've got to go back to the freezer and hit a couple of buttons to set the temperature back down to minus 40 and get him back in there. Now the Rocky Horror Show is a lot easier when I was playing it on an authentic Commodore 64. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the timer runs a little bit faster on the emulator. Working off the emulator, you have to use save states liberally in order to beat the game. Even so, you pretty much have to have a perfect run to even stand a chance of finishing in time. If you get hung up on ladders, or you have to spend more than a couple of seconds looking for your clothes after it's been stolen, there's no way in hell you'll have enough time to finish. Now the Rocky Horror Show is a perfect example as to why some people should be barred from ever touching a computer in their lives. The coding of this game is really, really bad. Not to the same level as the Black Crystal, but pretty close. The backgrounds are just still pictures, with the sprites being able to run around within previously coded boundaries. Of course, it's pretty easy for the sprites to get hung up in certain areas, such as the balcony and the entry hall. Or for instance, the suits of armor that are lying around. Your sprite can actually get stuck inside one of the suits of armor, and once it does, there's no way of getting out of it. The other really annoying part is the fact that whenever you bump into one of the characters, they spout lines from the movie. It's annoying because the entire game pauses while they sit there spouting off their lines. 
As long as that collision detection is going off, they'll keep saying the lines over and over again until you can finally manage to separate yourself from them. In the very least though, at least the timer stops running while they're sitting there and talking. Now on a personal note, I never actually saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show prior to picking up this game. In fact, I didn't actually see the movie until several years after I started playing this game for the first time. In fact, the only thing that even kept me remotely interested in this game was the music. And it's not because I like an Elsu Looping Sid rendition of the Time Warp. I remembered an episode of the old Disney Channel series Kids Incorporated, where they were all traveling through time. And one of the songs they did during that episode was a cover of the Time Warp. Now, I always, always thought that, that was a pretty cool song. So, of course, when I heard it playing throughout the game, I thought, oh cool, they're playing the Time Warp. Not really knowing that that song originally came from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It just goes to show you that I really like strange and weird things. If we were based just on the gameplay alone, I probably would have turned off this game after the very first time, stuck in the back of my disc box, and never took it out again. Now, the game timer takes approximately 15 minutes to run out. As I mentioned, you pretty much need to have a perfect run in order to be able to beat the game within that time. We also have to have a lot of luck in doing so. Part of it has to do with if you ever lose your clothes, you being lucky enough for them to only be a room or two away and then you can find them quickly. But the other part is the pieces of the Medusa machine. Since they're all scattered about the house randomly, and there's no more than three to a room, you could very well end up in a situation where all of them are on the upper floor and hidden behind a lot of obstacles. I've never actually seen it happen that way, but it's always a possibility. You spend a lot of time just running up and down between the floors and not have enough time to actually beat the game. If you'll take a look at the right, you'll see that the thermometer has now climbed above zero, which means Eddie is now running about the house free. It's impossible to win the game while Eddie is running around, so we gotta take a lot of time out of our way to go to the freezer and get him back in there. The electric barriers here in the lab are actually pretty easy to get by. All you have to do is hit the button and run by them before they turn back on again. But of course, if you get hung up on the edge of the ladder as you're coming down, you're going to have to run back up and turn it off again, because they do turn back on after only a couple of seconds. Since you can only hold on to one piece of the Medusa machine at a time, you want to make sure you're not carrying one as you're going back to the freezer for the first time. It takes a lot of time to get up here, and if there's a piece hiding in the freezer, you want to make sure that you don't have to make an unnecessary trip back. As you can see, one of the buttons is lit up. You have to push the button in order to get Eddie back into the freezer. Every time that he gets out, there's an additional button to the sequence that you have to push, and it's random every single time. The freezer room is the most annoying part of the game. It has everything to do with the fact that it was coded so that when you stop moving your joystick, your sprite is going to continue sliding around. Since the window in which your sprite can actually clamp a ladder is only as wide as the sprite itself, you can waste a hell of a lot of time just trying to get your guy in the perfect position for the game to actually allow you to climb up the ladder. Now we're a little more than halfway done assembling the machine, and we still have over half the time left. In most cases, it's still not going to be enough to finish the game. Fortunately for us, Rocky, in his gray spandex trunks, isn't actually going to hurt us at all throughout the game, except for getting in our way. Even if you're playing as Janet, he's not going to steal your clothes if you bump into him. He's just there to act as a moving screen. In fact, even if you bump into him, the only thing you get out of him is a whole bunch of question marks. When you're this deep into the lab, you're actually better off using the teleport to get back down than walking back. It's going to save you a lot of time. Just like everything else, you need to be in the perfect position in order to actually use the button. I'll take you right back to the Zen Room. You can actually die inside the Zen Room even though none of the characters can go in there. There have been times where either the razor blade or the hypodermic brushes the character and it triggers the death routine. What exactly the circumstances are, I don't know. As you can see, it took approximately 8 ticks off the timer for us to just get that one piece from the laboratory. Well, we've got two more that we need to go back up there and for. So by the time we're all done, the timer's going to be hovering right around 30. And we'll have only about 5 pieces left of the machine to find. It's going to make it really tight.
I guess the other really frustrating part about the zone room was the fact that since the door is floating in space and up against a wall, that you can spend a couple of seconds actually trying to find the one spot that will let you go through it. The behavior routines for the three clothing thieves is really frustrating. They sometimes will come right after you and right when they're about to touch you and steal your clothes, they'll just break off pursuit and go wandering in a different direction. Then there are times where they'll just deliberately block exits and prevent you from doing what you need to do. For example, if someone is standing right in front of the elevator doors when it opens up, the game doesn't let you out, instead it forces you to sit inside the elevator and wait till it goes back to the other floor before you can get out. Just like losing your clothes, all it takes is for that to happen once or twice, and there's no way in hell that you'll be able to beat the game in time. And there's only four pieces left of the machine to find before we can beat the game. And even though all four of these pieces are located right off the entry hall, having 32 ticks on the clock is going to be just barely enough for us to beat the game. Because if you take a look on the right hand side, Eddie's about to get out of the freezer again. And it's going to take us about 15 or 20 ticks for us to go back up to the freezer and get him back in there. And when I originally got this game as a kid, I got it without an instruction booklet. So I spent a long time just wandering around trying to figure out what I need to do. It took me a good couple weeks of trying to figure out exactly how to get the Medusa machine pieces back into the glowing square. Because again, if you're not standing exactly the right spot, it's not going to let you do it. Once I got that figured out though, the game was actually a piece of cake. Again, because the game timer ran a little bit slower on an actual Commodore 64, I could always beat the game with plenty of time to spare. Even though the timer is really tight at this point, I have no choice but to run back to the freezer and get Eddie in there. What you don't see is about the 117 times that Eddie ran me over at some point during the remaining 25 ticks. Like I said, it's pretty much impossible to do any portion of this game while Eddie is outside the freezer. You have to run back up there and get him back in. There's one piece left here on the stairwell, and there's two in the dining room which is right off the first screen. Getting by Riff Raff is going to take a little bit of luck. You have to zigzag by him as much as possible to avoid being on the same plane of him for any length of time. And it takes a little bit of luck, you have to pray that he doesn't turn around and face you while you're at the same height. That antimatter beam just shoots out really, really fast. If you're within range, it just takes an instant for you to die. You know, part of me has to wonder who actually gave the green light for this game to get published. Between the horrible collision detection, the very high level of difficulty, and the hours you have to spend watching characters spout off lines, it makes this game just feel like a cheap and poorly conceived money grab trying to cash in on the popularity of the film. If you delve into the source code of this game, you'll probably see comments from the developers like, why god why me, and I hope my name doesn't show up in the credits.
The Demon-Deuce machine fully assembled, the other character is free. We just need to run to the front door of the house in order to escape. With just under three ticks left on the timer, we've barely enough time to escape. Anything less than those just be one big wasted effort. And to top it all off, we don't even get a great ending of the house shooting up into space. Just shows us that screen again and goes straight to the credits. Thank you all for watching this edition of Let's Play The Rocky Horror Show. I'm the Almighty Bob. I'll catch you next time. Have a good day. Never forget who is the boss of you. Me. I am the boss of you. I am the boss of you. I am.